What's going on y'all? Welcome back to Harry the Horse Barbecue. And today we're making some illegal ribs. That's right, these ribs are about to break the law. Stick around if you wanna find out what it's all about. Let's get it. Harry the Horse Barbecue. Now what are illegal ribs? No, these ribs are not actually gonna break the law, but when I was at my butcher shopping around, him and I got to talking and he mentioned something called illegal ribs to me. And the first thing that popped into my mind was that is a great topic for a video. The second question I had was what are illegal ribs? Well, when he was telling me where they come from on a pig, they're almost attached to the spare rib section of a pig that kind of comes up and underneath the actual pig brisket and the picnic itself, sort of near the shoulder. This portion of the rib is not allowed in competition barbecue, which makes them illegal to use in competition. Now I already know they're gonna be so good that they should be illegal. So in order to make these illegal ribs, we gotta go shopping for something illegal. These illegal ribs look pretty good. And if you can see, I'm not making this up. They're even marked in the butcher shop as illegal. Crazy. Now what I've gotten here are two sections of illegal ribs. They're not that big, sort of similar to like a pork brisket size or the end of a spare rib section. I already know these are gonna be high quality and probably so good that they're gonna be illegal. Enough horsing around, let's get these illegal ribs out of the pack. All right, and here we have our illegal ribs and you can see they just look like some pretty neat sections of a spare rib with a little bit of fat cap on the top, sort of like a brisket. All right, all I did was take a little bit of fat off the top. Let's give these a pat down. It's like a cross between a pork brisket and some pork spare ribs. And we're gonna go down with a binder of some Q glue, getting back to some Harry the Horse basics around here. And then a real simple two parts pepper, one part salt, one part roasted granulated garlic, just so we can not mask the flavor of these illegal ribs so we can see what's so illegal about them. Q glue down. Nice and generous with this rub. Give them a flip. And over the top. That rub is looking real legal on these illegal ribs. These illegal ribs are all seasoned up and they're ready for the cooker. So let's go fire up the cooker. Nice. All right, y'all, cooker's rocking at 250. I'm gonna keep the temps right around 250 degrees for the entirety of this cook, but I think 250 is gonna build some beautiful smoky flavor on these illegal ribs. The cooker's rocking. Let's go discreetly get those illegal ribs. Let's go. Illegal rib time. Let's hope we don't get arrested for the deliciousness that's about to occur. Azee, azee. Let's get them on. Up and under, okay. hi ya ya Put the bigger end towards the fire. Nothing left to do other than just watch these fires and illegally cook some ribs. <coughs> Smokey. Let's close it down. Boom. Chaka laka I'm gonna go play with Ozzy. Hi, Ozzy. All right, y'all, three hours in on these illegal ribs, and it is a hot one out today, and my shirt is dirty, and it looks like I've been doing some illegal stuff out here. With that being said, let's take a look at these illegals and give them a spritz down. Ooh, hey! They're looking fantastic. One thing to note here, y'all, is that I have not been cutting down my splits into smaller splits. 
I've been using basically the smallest splits I can find in my pile and just throwing them on the fire. It's been holding a pretty solid 250 degrees this entire time, so I'm not mad at the lazy fire management. Let's take a look. You can see how both racks are starting to curl a little bit, but I haven't really been running the fire hotter than 260. Let's spritz them down. The color on these ribs is looking pretty nice. Fat render is getting there. It's almost like I'm trying to babysit a brisket and some ribs at the same time. We want that little fat cap to be super rendered though. All right, y'all, all I did was spritz it down with a little apple cider vinegar and water. Color is looking great. We're gonna let them rock out before we bring you back for a wrap. I'm thinking one in paper and one in aluminum foil. Keep maintaining 250 and let's close it down. Boom. All right, y'all, nearly five hours in on these illegals, and let's take a look. I tented them with a little foil on the edges just so they wouldn't dry out. Ooh, 186, 184, they're rocking nearly identically. That fat render's not too bad, ooh. I say we take these in and we wrap them, one in aluminum foil, one in some butcher paper, and why don't we add a little beef tallow while we're at it? Let's get it. Right, about five hours in the smoke and then about an hour wrapped in the cooker, then about a 45 minute rest and these illegal ribs have done their time. So let's unveil these bad boys. Oh yeah. It's looking like the foil washed away a little bit of the bark on this one and the bark stayed pretty much intact for the paper wrap. I'm thinking we start with the foil wrap. <laughs> Let's see what's so illegal about these ribs. I mean, it's looking pretty much like a normal spare rib right out of the gate, but this texture is looking a little different and we still have a little bit of a fat cap up there. Let's see how we did on these. It's looking good. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. Wow, that's got a different texture than a spare rib, but look at that cook on that. That is perfectly done. But that meat is a little different. That meat almost is, it's almost pulled pork-esque, but then has sort of like a, like a brisket flat sort of texture, which makes total sense based on where this is located on the pig. Yeah, definitely more of like a pulled pork kind of taste. I could see why these would be illegal. That is fatty. It's moist, super easy to cook. You got a little bit of that fat cap on top. That's a perfectly cooked rib. Some of those crispy edges. Mmm. And say what you want about using beef tallow. Man, it adds such a rich decadence to this. Nothing wrong with it. Let's see what these butcher paper illegal ribs are bringing to the table. Don't sleep on these little baby end cuts. That's gonna be a mouthful of goodness. Ooh, we gotta go same rib because we got that extra bark on the outside. That's looking good. Same deal, great smoke ring in there. Sort of a different texture than a spare rib up top and a little bit of that fat cap. Here we go. That is clean. Mmm. These ribs are gonna need an attorney because they're committing a crime of deliciousness. Man, I can see why these are illegal. This illegal rib is not horsing around. Mmm, these illegal ribs are so good, I just can't stop. Mmm. This rib is illegal and the flavors don't stop, stop, stop. A rib so illegal, it is running from the cop, cop, cop. It's juicy and it's tender and its flavors just pop, pop, pop. I totally get why these are called illegal ribs and why people cannot use them in competition. It's just not fair. 
Thank y'all for tuning in to Harry the Horse Barbecue. I really appreciate you checking out this video. Now these illegal ribs have basically been kept locked behind bars, so they might be difficult to find out in a regular grocery store. In fact, I've never seen them ever before until I talked to my butcher. So go out there, go to a local butcher and mention illegal ribs and see what they have to offer. It is a unique experience and it's individualized from a traditional spare rib. You guys gotta give this a try. Make sure you subscribe to the channel below. I know you wanna do it, so just hit that subscribe button. You know we got a nice, crispy, fatty exterior on the outside of these illegal ribs, so leave a like on this video. Leave a comment down below if you've heard of illegal ribs before, and let me know if you've cooked them before. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we're posting new content. And you can follow me on Instagram, at HarryTheHorseBarbecue. Tag me so I can see what y'all are cooking because it really inspires me to get outside and cook. And with that being said, there's only one more thing, y'all. This one is going straight to the horse's mouth. We'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace! Mmm!